Belfast in splitting ferroelectric oxide. It's a work uh, that was mainly done uh, in collaboration uh, with Anya Gianni from Algeria and uh, Camilo Garcia, who spoke this morning and who is now at the University of Santander. Uh, both of them did, I would say, the, the hard work and the calculations. Uh, I also collaborated uh, with Eric uh, Bousquet and uh, Wendy Tong from, from Liège and uh, uh, also with uh, Silvia Picozzi and Paolo Mahoney from uh, the CNSPIN uh, who were at the origin of our interest in, in this topic. So uh, I, I don't need to convince you that ferroelectric perovskites uh, form a fascinating class of multifunctional materials. We have seen that uh, all along this uh, workshop these materials are known to be ferroelectric, piezoelectric, flexoelectric. Uh, we've seen they are good for nonlinear optics, uh, uh, magneto, electric multiferric, as we've seen this morning. And some years uh, ago, Sylvia proposed that uh, maybe they might have a new interest uh, in ferroelectric uh, Rafba semiconductor. And so let me first uh, uh, remind you uh, uh, very uh, quickly uh, what is the Rafba effect. So as it was uh, already uh, briefly mentioned this morning, if you combine spice inversion, uh, space inversion symmetry and time reversal uh, symmetry, you might get degeneracy of the up and uh, down spin uh, bands. But now, uh, if under inversion symmetry breaking, as it can uh, appear at surface, interface, or even in bulk, uh, the spin orbit coupling can lead the degeneracy through the so called uh, Rajva and Russell effect. And so I just mentioned here uh, what is the, the Rajva Hamiltonian, and, and from this Rajva Hamiltonian, uh, you will get a splitting of the energy band if you uh, assume. Uh, 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 a free electron band here, uh, you will see that this Rajba effect will, will basically shift the parabola uh, uh, proportionally uh, to k uh, oppositely for both spins, and so you will uh, split this uh, red parabola into the green and the blue curve uh, here through this uh, uh, Rajba effect. And basically, in, in, the, in the case of a symbol uh, Parabola like here, you can estimate the linear Rafa uh, parameter from basically 2 ER divided by KR, where ER is the uh, energy shift of the band and KR is the, is the K shift of the band. So, what uh, are these uh, famous uh, Rafa ferroelectric? So, basically, they are simply ferroelectric semiconductors which are showing large. Rajva uh, spin splitting. So uh, the expected added uh, functionality of this material is that the spin splitting and the texture uh, that you uh, would get from uh, the, the, the breaking of symmetry produced by the polarization might be reversible when you switch uh, the polarization with an electric field. So that's uh, basically the interest and uh, basically this concept of Rajba ferroelectric was first demonstrated uh, by Sylvia in the case of germanium telluride at the theoretical level and then it was even confirmed experimentally uh, in uh, germanium telluride thin uh, fins but in practice uh, this germanium telluride is has a very small band gap and is known to be uh, not really a, a good ferroelectric so uh, people were then looking for alternative materials uh, to show this, uh, this property. And among the years there will be uh, different kind of reports of, of possibility to achieve that uh, either in bismuth aluminate or in strain uh, potassium tantalate, in heterostructure, even in hexagonal semiconductors. But I would say so these were very nice work but all the suggestions were rather exotic and they were not concerning really strong ferroelectric material. Um, and so I, I would say to know no robust ferroelectric are showing Rafa spin splitting, uh, showing uh, Rafa spin splitting have been identified. And so that's a problem, of course, for people who would like to use that for um, applications. And so the purpose of this talk is to try, and that's a question I had from Sylvia when she visited us once, she gave a seminar about that, and so 
she told me, oh, okay, you are an expert in ferroelectric, and so do you have some suggestion about some ferroelectric that would be that would show this property? Because Sylvia is uh, coming more from the magnetism, and so she was uh, thinking that maybe she was uh, missing something, and then we started to think together, and so we said, okay, let's try to rationalize the rough spin splitting in uh, perovskite uh, from first principle simulation. So. Uh, as you will see, it's just a basic calculation using either VASP of Abinit, so it's uh, essentially GGAPB, so functional calculation, including uh, spin orbit coupling. And so there is nothing very special about the method, I would say. And then from this, we were also combining uh, structural analysis using OPMOD and uh, tight ending model to try to understand the, the rest. So what are the requirements? So if we are looking for ideal ferroelectric rough bar semiconductor, we would look for a non-magnetic ferroelectric with a sizable switchable polarization, a reasonably large band gap to be a good ferroelectric. We should include EV ions uh, with large spin orbit coupling as well. And uh, the idea is to get significant rough bar spin splitting at the band edges, so that when we do slightly the system, we might take advantage of this rough mass means splitting. And these properties, of course, because if you want to do that, these properties would be robust under appropriate doping. So thinking about this, we were uh, thinking that probably regarding ferroelectricity, the most obvious candidates would be D0 perovskite with a transition metal at the B side, because that's where we find usually the good ferroelectrics. Uh, then the band gap in these materials is between O2P and BD states. And then if we want to get rough bus in splitting at the band edge, probably we should choose a material where the EV uh, cation is at the B side, just to uh, be able to have the rough bus in splitting at the bottom of the conduction band. And then if we want to achieve ferroelectric control of the rough bus pin splitting, we might probably look for B-type ferroelectricity. And you see there is already some kind of contradiction here because you want a, a big cation on the B side, but you want also B-type ferroelectricity, so a small cation. So it looks complicated. But then we were thinking that there is probably a material that might be interesting. It's not a real perovskite as we think about it, but WO3 is a defect perovskite with no A atom, but it, require, it, it follow, fulfills some of these requirements. It has an EV uh, tungsten atom at the B side. It has a band gap between O2P and W5D states with a large spin orbit coupling. And if you look at the phonon dispersion curve in the cubic phase of WO3, you see that the dominant instability is at the gamma point and is a polar instability at the gamma point. So no, unfortunately, WO3 is not a ferroelectric material. Experimentally, the ground state uh, is, has been disputed for some time, uh, but uh, uh, it was sometimes thought to be slightly ferroelectric, but no, uh, uh, I think people more believe it's a non-polar ground state, it's a non-polar P21 bar C uh, ground state that is combining uh, anti-ferro-distortive rotation and anti-polar motion. But as you can see in the graph here, there are many phases that are very close in energy. And so even if the ground state combines rotation and anti-polar motion, the ferroelectric phase, uh, which are in, in red in this graph, are very close in energy. And so from, from this observation, there is a very small difference of energy between the, the, the ferroelectric and the non-ferroelectric phase. We were even suggesting that this material might be a good anti-ferroelectric, basically. Yeah, you just have 10 mEV between the, the ground state and the, and the polar phase. But, so, OK, um, WO3 was never observed ferro in the ferroelectric state, but we thought that probably this ferroelectric state might be a prototypical uh, case that we can used to investigate and rationalize the interplay between polarization and spin orbit coupling in the perovskite. And so that's what we did. We started from the cubic phase of WO3, and uh, I focus here on the band structure at the bottom of the conduction bands, where in the cubic structure you have basically the three uh, T2G states which are degenerated. And then we were looking at what's happening now if you put some polar distortion, 
And if you put a polar distortion along the z direction, what you will do is that you will split this level, you will get a lowest dxy state, and then you will uh, get a splitting uh, of the dyz and the dxz level that will appear a little bit above due to hybridization with the oxygen. So these are anti-bonding levels that move up. And here I have a splitting which is proportional to the ferroelectric distortion. Now, if I switch on the spin orbit coupling in this material, I will also leave the degeneracy of the states in 2 plus 1, and there is we hear a splitting that is directly proportional to the spin orbit coupling, and the role of the spin orbit coupling will be to completely mix these three states, uh, uh, these three uh, d uh, orbital together. So now what's happening if I put spin orbit coupling and ferroelectric distortion together? Well, it depends on the ratio between the uh, spin orbit uh, splitting and the ferroelectric splitting. So if we are in a regime where the ferroelectric distortion is very small, uh, and the, 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 the ferroelectric splitting will be small compared to the spin orbit coupling, and then I will get basically something which is comparable to what I have here, completely mixing the three states. Now, when I increase the ferroelectric distortion, basically the dxy orbital here will be completely isolated of the two orders, and the spin orbit coupling will only uh, mix the uh, two higher states, so the dyz and the dxz uh, state. So here, probably, we are in a regime where we have in a polarization of 50 microcoulomb per centimeter square in WO3. We are in this regime where the ferroelectric uh, splitting is much larger than the spin orbit coupling and uh, where we have this uh, uh, effect. So the lowest band here is a purely dxy orbital, which is basically perpendicular to the polarization. Now, if we have a close look to these different bands, what we observe, and if you look at the symmetries of these states, you realize that the three states can show rather than splitting by, by symmetry. So there is nothing forbidden. But in practice, you see that the two uh, states, upper two TG states, are showing a rather than spin splitting, while the lowest uh, state, which is uh, a purely uh, deep perpendicular state, uh, is not uh, showing anything. So that's the observation we have for this specific case. Then we did look also at what's happening if we rotate the polarization in the 1, 1, uh, 0 direction, for instance, going from the, the P4MM to the AMM2 phase, and we get exactly the same picture. So it's not dependent of the orientation of the polarization. Uh, the splitting is a little bit different because the symmetry is lower, though, but uh, we get exactly the same thing. The lower state that we get at the bottom of the conduction band is associated to the d orbital, which are perpendicular to the polarization direction and are not showing any uh, roughness in speed. We did the same calculation for a real perovskite. If we take potassium tantalate, for instance, it's not potassium tantalate, it's an incipient ferroelectric, but you can easily make it ferroelectric under strain. And so if you make it ferroelectric tetragonal or uh, AMM2 under compressive and tensile strain, basically you get exactly the same result. The lowest T2G band is associated to the d orbital perpendicular to the polarization and we, it's not showing any uh, rough mass spin splitting. So, uh, we try to rationalize this through a uh, simple tie bending model. I will uh, uh, not enter into too many details, uh, but this model is really confirming what we, are, uh, what we have uh, seen before. If we restrict first to the T2G uh, subspace, you see that the lowest wave function here will uh, progressively uh, become a pure dxy uh, state when the ferroelectric splitting becomes large compared to the spin orbit coupling, uh, while the other state uh, will become completely uh, perpendicular to it. And if you look at the RAFBA parameter, you expect that also in the limit of large ferroelectric splitting, this RAFBA parameter will go to zero. But the surprise was that 
the Rafa parameter of this band is not only going to zero, but the one of the other band also should go to zero. So it will not be exactly zero, but it will decrease proportionally to the, uh, to the, to the ferroelectric uh, splitting. And then we were like, okay, this model is too simple. And then uh, Paolo uh, Maroni uh, extended the model to include also hybridization with either oxygen P states or with EG states. And when you do this extension, then you realize that you can explain that the lowest band will show no rough spin splitting or a small rough spin splitting uh, while the two other states uh, will show uh, sizable uh, splitting. So we were thinking, so what's the dominant thing there? Is it the interaction with the oxygen that we thought at first? Uh, in fact, when we switch off uh, the spin orbit coupling on the oxygen 2p stays, there is not any change in the band structure. So we were thinking, okay, that's probably not what is the dominant effect there. But what we realized is that these two uh, upper uh, T2G states here are those which are hybridizing the most with the EG levels. And uh, what, we, what we did is simply to tune the position of the EG level by putting a U parameter on the UG states. And we saw that tuning these EG states up and down, we were able to tune the amplitude of the rough bus spin splitting in these two bands there. So we really believe that the origin of the rough bus spin splitting in this level is related to the hybridization with the EG states. Okay. So the conclusion is, although it's not imposed by symmetry, in the ABO triperovkites, we don't see rough bus spin splitting at the bottom of the conduction band. And it's limited to the upper state hybridized with the EG states. But now the question is, can we find a way to bypass this problem, and can we reverse the T2G band order? And so you have to remember that this lower state that we have here is related to the d perpendicular orbital, so I would say to the d orbital that is perpendicular to the polarization. And so we were thinking that if we confine the system in the direction that is perpendicular to p, then we should move uh, this level up in energy and maybe get the right level at the bottom of the conduction. And this is something that you can do if you consider the b i w 6 Aurelius phase. This phase is exactly uh, a layer of w 3 but which is sandwiched between uh, two bi 2 o 2 fluoride-like uh, blocks. And this material 